Aloha! Welcome to West Kauai United Methodist Church. Welcome to our Kamakani Sanctuary and to the first Sunday of this new month of October. We hope you all are well and we thank you for tuning in. We welcome you and we hope you will enjoy. God is good. All, all the time. time. All the time. God, God is, is good. good. The psalm for today is Psalm 19, taken from page 750 of the United Methodist Hymnal. We will read this responsively. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words, their voice is not heard. Yet their voices goes out for, for all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them, God has set a tent for the sun, which comes forth like a bridegroom leaving his chamber and runs its course with joy like a strong man. Its rising is from the end of the heavens and its circuits to the end of them. And there is nothing hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and trippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can understand one's own errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Also, Keep your servant from the insolent. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Today's hymn is from the Christ Our Life Church. This hymn was born from their fellowship which began through testimonies of repentance and a longing to follow Jesus Christ wholeheartedly. This is Cry for Humility. Spirit and in truth, teach me. 
And now for our announcements. Please mark December 5th on your calendar for our church fundraising rummage sale. It will be held at the Kaumakani Hall from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. We are accepting only non-food donations in Kaumakani and need volunteers to sit on the fundraising committee. Please contact Auntie Pat if you are interested. As we have arrived at the first Sunday of October, Holy Communion will be offered this week. This means that you can buy your elements and contact Pastor Nafi to confirm when he can call or FaceTime or Zoom you to bless the elements and conduct Holy Communion for you in the safety of your home. We will continue our weekly Wednesday check-in at 6 p.m. on Zoom. A link will be sent out on the day, so if you would like to join us and do not receive the link, feel free to reach out to Pastor Nafi or Mele. The contact details will appear on the screen shortly or you can always send a message on the West Kauai UMC Facebook or YouTube pages. Everyone is welcome, so if you have the time, please join us. This week on Thursday, we will also have our Bible study. This will be at 6 p.m. on Zoom. Again, everyone is welcome to join, and a link for the Zoom meeting will be sent out. If you have any announcements, joys, or concern you would like to share, please contact Mele by phone or email by Friday, 6 p.m. of every week. Thank you. And now for our tithes. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 to 10. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. We have two options available for you to give your tithes, gifts, and offerings. You can either give online via our West Kauai UMC website or send a check to our post office box. Both addresses will appear on the screen shortly. Thank you for continuing to honor the Lord with the first fruits of your labor. His faithfulness continues to pour into his people during this time. And now for a prayer of the people. Birthdays and anniversaries. Corey Pablo celebrated his 38th birthday 
on Thursday, October 1st. Auntie Charlene's granddaughter, Ariel, celebrated her birthday on Wednesday, the 30th of September. Debbie and Randall Valiciano are celebrating their wedding anniversary on Thursday, 8th of October. Happy birthday and happy anniversary to you all. May God continue to bless each of you with many more joyful years to come. And now for our joys. This Wednesday, we were able to successfully hold our special charge conference with DS Moon Young Lee. Thank you to all who were able to join in on Zoom meeting and everyone who lifted this charge conference up in prayer. Pastor Nafe and Mele are so grateful for all the grace that West Kauai EMC continued to extend towards them and pray that God continues to bless the West Kauai EMC ministry that we're all a part of. We celebrate, praise the Lord. And now for our concerns. Please continue to pray for Dan Huff. Please pray for a diagnosis and a plan for treatment and cure for his liver. Pray for healing and strength for him, his wife, his family during this time. Please pray for the President of the United States and First Lady. They have been diagnosed with the coronavirus. Please pray for healing and strength for them during this time. And also pray for all the leaders of our country that they may receive God's discernment and lead with integrity and in truth according to his will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for blessing us with this new day. Today we want to give glory to you and the praise of every blessings we have received from you. We're thankful for your word and for your guiding us every day. Thank you for being there when no one was there. When we look back on all you have done, our faith increases. Help us not to take your goodness for granted. Lord, we lift up all who are facing illness today, whether in body or in mind. We store strength to their bodies and joy to their spirit. Comfort them and allow them to be renewed in mind so they may continue to bless and serve. Give us patience as we wait and be sure to give to you all the glory. Your word teaches us that your joy is our strength and we need your joy every day in all places in our lives. In your mighty name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Today's scripture is taken from the Epistle of Paul to the Philippians, chapter 2, verse 1 to 13. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, 
any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. For this Sunday, we again have another epistle of Apostle Paul. But this time, it's for the church in Philippi. As always, let us look into the context of this passage and then talk a little bit about how it applies to us today. Paul was in prison awaiting trial at the time he wrote this letter. And apparently, he heard that there were Judaizers, Jews Christian ministers, who had arrived in Philippi. So basically what these Jewish ministers were preaching was that Jesus is Jewish, therefore, the Christians in Philippi must follow the Jewish traditions. In other words, for these Gentiles to call themselves Christians, they must become Jewish first. And these Judaizers started to elevate themselves above everyone because they were already Jewish. They made it seem like they were closer to Christ than anyone else. These ministers were proud of their Jewish ancestry and were confident in the work of their ancestors that had come before them. Paul himself had once believed in this as a Pharisee, but now counts all such things as loss and rubbish in view of knowing Christ and having Christ's righteousness that comes through faith. Philippi was a major city in Greece under the Roman colony. So a vast majority of these, uh, the members of this church were Gentiles. And Paul heard that some members of the church had started falling for the teachings of these ministers, causing major division within this Philippian church. Not only did this lead to them straying away from the Gospels that Paul taught, they were also becoming like the truest Christian ministers. Unsure, uncertain of the outcome for himself as he sat in prison, Paul's concern was not his persecution nor being condemned to death. His concern was the souls of this church in Philippi. They needed to reconcile with each other and be of the same mind in humility. 
And in keeping with his purpose, Paul quoted what is known as the Christ hymn. That is verse 6 to 11 of today's scripture. Which is, the, which is one of the, the earliest pieces of Christian understanding of Christ in the form of a hymn. Paul quotes this hymn to the church to teach them humility. And the reason why humility is so important is that these Jewish ministers were competing with each other and the church members also doing likewise. This is why Paul said in chapter 1 verse 15 to 17 where some proclaim Christ from envy and rivalry out of selfish ambition, not sincerely. But why humility? In fact, what is humility? I think all of us here already have a general idea or perhaps our own definition of what humility is. I looked up the word and according to the Oxford Dictionary, humility is defined as a modest or low view of one's importance. And that is exactly what Paul is teaching us today. That if there's any role model or someone we need to imitate his or her humility, it would be Jesus. His life, ministry, death, and resurrection. In fact, Paul wrote on the first three verses of the hymn that we need to be in the same mind as Jesus was, who though was the Son of God, yet he did not regard himself as equal with God, as something he can use for his own benefits. Like these Christian ministers in this church in Philippi. But Jesus emptied himself and took the form of a slave. You know, in those days, there were two ways to be a slave. You were either made a slave by being on the losing side of a war, or you became one to pay a debt to someone. The irony of this is that Jesus was not a prisoner of war, nor did he owe anyone anything. Yet, that is how far he went down on the social ladder to show us what humility looks like. Church, in that context, do you know how shameful that is for someone to show humility this way? To be a slave, you, an, you are an outcast. You are a property of someone else. To be a slave, you are an unclean person and do not even have the worth to come near the temple. But Jesus had flipped that world of self-righteousness upside down. Apostle Paul Apostle Paul wants all to do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility. Look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. And that is the point of the Christ hymn, that Jesus emptied himself of his divine prerogatives and humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. The most shameful and humiliating way of dying. So the selfish, selfish ministers, in fact, all Christians should do likewise. As we know, humility is challenging because we are still in a world that is in the realm of evil. That sometimes when we empty ourselves as Jesus did, others take advantage of that. 
some would look at it as an opportunity to exploit. With humility comes sacrifice. Sacrifice of your own desire to shine. Sacrifice of your own wants and sometimes needs. Sacrifice of your want to be recognized as better. And it can be so discouraging because once you become an imitator of Christ's humility, you are a new person. You will look at the world through the humility of Christ. And I just wanted to encourage you today, do not get tired of being humble in Christ. The late American pastor and Christian writer Aidan Wilson Tosser once wrote that for the Christian, humility is absolutely indispensable. Without it, there can be no self-knowledge, no repentance, no faith, and no salvation. For us Christians, the Bible tells us that we all fall short of the glory of God. All had sinned, and we need salvation to be redeemed. And salvation is received through faith and repentance. And those two can only be realized when we stand in humility before God. You see, humility in your heart comes when you see what Christ gave up so that he could reconcile with you and me. After Paul talks about the need for the church to imitate the humility of Christ, he then described what God the Father gave Jesus when he humbled himself and obeyed him by taking up the cross. Verse 9 to 11, Paul wrote, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And that is the promise in which it awaits us when we humble ourselves before God. That God will exalt us into a high place before our enemies, before this fallen world. Humility is the gateway into the grace and favor of God. Let us humble ourselves before God and keep our eyes on the promise that Jesus awaits us with. Amen. And that concludes our service for today. We hope you enjoyed it. And we welcome you to join us again, same time, same place, next week. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you so much for your word today. And we pray, Lord, that whoever is watching this, we pray your blessing on them. And we pray, Lord, that you teach us to be humble, for you are humble. In your name, Jesus Christ. Amen.